Good morning. We are in February. It is February 6th, the first Monday of February, and we are clicking through the calendar. Every day seems slow, but the months seem to be going by. And before we know it, it'll be summertime and life will be a lot more fun. But today we are here together and I'm grateful for that. And I want to talk about mindfulness. Let me introduce myself. I am Reverend Melissa Ebkin. I'm the pastor of the Iliopolis and Nyanic Christian Churches in Iliopolis in Nyanic, Illinois. I'm the founder of Light Life and Love Ministries. This is an outreach effort to connect with those who haven't found that community of faith yet or who are spiritual but not religious and still searching. I'm also the host of the Pursuing Uncomfortable podcast where we inspire people to lean into the difficult things in life. Today, I want to talk about mindfulness. What comes, what comes to mind for you when you hear the word mindfulness? For me, a lot of times when I hear the word mindfulness, I picture someone sitting in the lotus position, meditating. That's just one image. But there are so many benefits to practicing mindfulness and to being mindful. And it can have a dramatic influence in the health of our lives and those around us. So let's take a few minutes and talk about it. For these next five weeks, I'm gonna be talking about practices that affect our inner peace. Mindfulness is a great place to start. When it comes to inner peace, when it comes to having less stress in life, being able to breathe more deeply, to navigate all the ups and downs, mindfulness is a great place to start. Now, I want to run through the benefits of mindfulness first and then talk about how we work that into our lives. So let's jump right in. For mental health, it's important to know what you're feeling, to be connected to your emotions, to your body, and to what's happening around you in the moment, to be present to your life. Oh, what was that show? Oh, there was a movie, Adam Sandler was in it. I can't remember it. It just popped into my head, but he had a remote that he could fast forward through parts of his life that were boring or that he wasn't interested in. And he found that, oh, that has such profound negative effects. Oh, somebody please put that in the comments. I can't remember it. But anyway, we do that sometimes. We don't have a master remote that can affect the passage of time. But we do that within our own minds and in our own hearts. Have you ever been in a situation where you're not fully present, but you're thinking about what's next? You're planning on what you're doing after that. You're running through other conversations you've had beforehand. You're just not fully present in the moment. Yes, we all do that. We all do that a lot. And Sometimes it's good to do that. Sometimes if we're just standing in line somewhere, it's good to think about what's next, to check our calendars. I'm not saying to never do that. But it's also vital that we are mindful, that we take time throughout the day to be fully present in the moment we're in, especially if we're with other people. Chris Rose did an interview with Fred Rogers once and, or maybe more than once, I don't know. But in this one particular interview, he asked Fred Rogers, Mr. Rogers, about his impact on the multitudes of people that he, that had heard his teachings. And he had a brilliant response. He said, none of that matters. The only number that matters is you and me right here. We are in this moment together and I am present to you. That is what counts. And I love that. That left such a profound impact on me. Yes, our lives matter. They have universal impact. But in the moment, whoever is with us at that time deserves our full presence. Be fully present with the people in your lives. And mentally, this affects our mental health because we are able then to be better connected to our bodies, to our emotions, to our feelings and our surroundings, and having that connection and knowing and recognizing our emotions helps us to navigate those things and to manage the ups and downs in life 
and to better make sense of what's happening. Another way that mindfulness affects us is through creativity. Now, before you shush the creativity part and say, oh, I'm not a creative type. Well, we all are. We may not make a living through creative pursuits, but we all have to problem solve in our lives. We all have to take what we have into account and manage it in a way to produce results we want. Whether that's in a home, managing a budget, whether that's at work, managing whatever we do at work, or wherever in a hobby, what have you. We all need to be able to problem solve. We all need that creativity in our minds to be at its best. And if you do make your living through a creative process, it's even more vital. Being mindful helps our brains to stay wired in a healthy way and it boosts our memory ability. It helps us to fire those synapses more quickly and it will help us in our problem solving efforts. So creativity is a big one. Next, our physical health. And here's how mindfulness can affect us physically. It, I read that we are in fight or flight the average person is 11 times throughout the day, 11 times. That's a lot. And that's the average person. 11 times throughout the day, your body senses that you may be in danger. Now your body doesn't know the difference between a saber tooth tiger charging at you and that feeling of dread that's coming on you for an impending conversation or project that you have due. Your, your body doesn't know the difference there. It just knows fight or flight. When we are mindful, mindful undoes that fight or flight response. Mindfulness reconnects our brain to our higher thought process, which is the opposite of fight or flight. Fight or flight disconnects all other resources and fires up the amygdala and those parts of the brain that move the big muscle groups. So to come out of that, we need to be mindful. We need to reconnect to our higher capabilities in our thought process. This has a profound effect on our health. It empowers us to have a healthier immune system and it slows the aging process. Who doesn't want that? So take time to be mindful throughout the day and the spiritual benefits also to stay grounded in chaotic times, to have gratitude, Here's where gratitude and mindfulness work together. They both have our focus on what we have, not on what's lacking. Being mindful is focusing on the moment, what we feel, what is around us, what we can see, hear, taste, touch, smell, intuit. Mindfulness is being fully present in that moment. Gratitude requires us to be mindful in order to acknowledge what is good with us. It reminds us of what we have and takes our focus away from what we don't have or from what's missing, from all of those sources that cause us to worry. There are a lot of effects to mindfulness. So how do we do it? Let's talk about that for a little bit. Mindfulness is important. It can help us to live a healthier life. It can help us to stay better connected to people, to the source of all that is and to the broader human community. There are several different ways you can do that. There are physical ways. Uh, some people do yoga or Tai Chi or some sort of dance or movement that makes you focus on your breathing in the moment. Another way that's common is through centering prayer or meditation. Both of these practices involve us being still and just focusing on a breath or focusing on a word. It's emptying out all of the other things from our thoughts and just being present to what is with us in the moment. I have some guided meditations. If you would like to try those, let me know. I'll send those to you. They are helpful. Uh, centering prayer is the same thing. A lot of times when we sit down to pray, we use a lot of words, and that's a really helpful way to pray. But it's even more helpful, it's even more 
profound for us. It affects us more deeply if we take a moment or two to just be silent, to center ourselves in the silence and anchor ourselves to the presence of God within us. So this is a little bit about mindfulness. Of course, there's more on the blog. If you hop over, the link is in the comments. And I invite you this week to take some time each day, set an alarm if you need to. We all have those devices, whether they're on our wrist or in our pockets or sitting on our end tables that can set, that can have an alarm for us or a timer and set it throughout the day and take a few moments to just be mindful. And then let me know how that has affected you. I would love to hear your feedback. That's what I have for you today. That's my wish for you this week. Let's begin our journey toward more inner peace with being mindful each day. Again, my name is Melissa Ebkin. I'm the pastor at the Iliopolis and Nyanic Christian Churches. And I want you to have the peace that passes understanding. I want you to breathe deeply of the joy and love available to you in this life. And if you are plagued with worry or fear, I want you to be able to breathe and know that there is more. I'll see you again next Monday. Bye for now.